Daytona you're referring to being ridden by the Northern Territory, Sam Lambert. He's running in the top 10. We are lap 9 of 14 in the second Super Sport race of the weekend. Phyllis. On board we ride with him down Yamaha Straight. Yamaha Motor Finance Straight, principal backer of the National Superbike Championship this season. Tricky turn one and turn two here at this circuit. It's great to be on board with Phyllis to get a good uh, look at it. Then you flick into uh, this left-hander turn three, a blind off camber downhill, hard on the gas before you can actually see where you're going. Then that leads into a very hard right-hander braking. Now here's a good group of guys. Yeah, 67 is Brenton Hyde leading that group. And there's Phyllis being overtaken by a couple of riders, including Aiden Coote. So it looks like Phyllis is having problems here. He's in danger of dropping outside the top 10 at the moment. Now yeah. we see the wide shot. Yeah, there's uh, the youngest guy in the race too, Nick Limington, just uh, 16 years old with the uh, yellow helmet in the back of the uh, screen there. This is his first weekend racing, riding one of these 600 machines. So this is a great result for him there on the number 27 machine. So Bretton Hyde leading this group. He's on the Yamaha YZF R6. So uh, this is the battle for 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th. Gee, I can't believe that uh, Phyllis has ended up back down this far in the grid. He had a, he had a really good uh, gap on this group, but uh, for one reason or another, uh, he's come back to the group now. Yeah, he was 4th at one stage, wasn't he? In this race, we see Aidan Coote. He's been fairly consistent all weekend, Coote, on the Yamaha. But again, we switch our attention to the race leader, who continues to find himself under pressure from Troy Gunther. He's be, he'd be hoping, Gunther, that the leader will make an error, but it's not looking likely at the moment. Well, we saw Van Thuren make an error in race one, and that's uh, really uh, destroyed his championship hopes at the moment. Uh, Braden Elliott, the way that he's riding, he's just on the edge. This is worth looking at, isn't it? Terrific battle. Nicholas Limington that you've alluded to on Bike 27. Yep, the young South Australian as well. He raced overseas last year, raced in the uh, Spanish Championship. So uh, he's come home to consolidate and uh, learn how to ride one of these 600 four-stroke machines for the first time. Yeah, he's on the white bike. And again, we ride on board with Alex Phyllis, who's caught right up in the middle of this group of riders battling for fifth position. And that looks like Hyde just in front of him. It is. Brenton Hyde on the number 67 machine. Yeah, we'll stay with this battle for a moment. Then we cut back to the race leaders and nothing has changed. It is still Elliott in advance of Gunther. Chris Quinn and Kane Burns are disputing for third and fourth on the racetrack. Yeah, it's difficult to see where Gunther can make a move he just looks smoother everywhere you almost i'm almost willing him to get a little bit out of shape and uh, take the fight to the man in front he needs to be more aggressive is what you're saying i think so but he's new to this class new to this bike fantastic job for him and oh and he's just um got caught up in the traffic in the wrong spot too that's certainly not going to help his uh, cause now our leader elliot overtaking cameron webster on the 45 machine under the bridge for the run down into Motul Corner, the right-hander. This is where the part of the circuit, a lot of the bikes get out of shape, charging down the hill. There's a few ripples on the road and under the load of braking, we do see a lot of movement. Even when you were out there on the R1 earlier in the day, that part of the circuit looked fairly challenging. There was a lot of movement going on then, I can tell you. <laughs> Entirely understandable. I was nervous watching it. <laughs> Here's Quinn, and that's Burns on bike 30. So you're riding on board with the current third place holder. And there's no doubt that Burns is losing touch with him. So Burns, maybe his tyres are spent, I'm not sure. Well, this is the sort of circuit that can do that. Uh, we're three quarters of the way through the race now, heading into lap 13 and 14. So, uh, you know, um, if you didn't look after your tyres in the early part of the race, uh, you're going to pay for it now. Yeah, and Burns has found himself in battles throughout the day, hasn't he? Yeah, he certainly has. But I'll tell you what, look at uh, uh, Gunther in second position now. He's closed that gap down just a little bit, keeping the pressure on uh, Elliot out in front. Yeah, and not for the first time today. He's pretty good, Gunther, across this back part of the circuit. Through the turns, 
Yeah, he is. There's two distinct parts to this circuit. There's this tighter section, and then from this point on, just as we go through this next left-hander, it opens right up. It's very bumpy, very blind, and you have to be very committed to go through this part uh, and get a good lap time. Now, we ride on board again with Phyllis, and nothing has changed. He's still chasing Brenton Hyde, the latter riding the Yamaha. And this battle has been going on for quite some time. This is the group of riders in 5th, 6th and 7th. Elliot seems to have this uh, race under control, although Gunther's right there. If you're ever going to try anything, now's the time, my friend. Yep. Race leader, a New South Welshman, as they cross the start-finish line to embark on the last lap of the Morgan Park Raceway. Now, Phyllis has dropped back to be last of that group of riders. So we can see Coot on the yellow machine. Yeah, we can also see the youngster on the white bike ahead of him. Yeah, that's Limington on the Caterpillar R6. But uh, look at this now. This is all pretty exciting. He's uh, close. And that's uh, the first time I've seen um, the Kawasaki man a little bit out of shape. I think he's giving it a go. Having a red hot crack on look the last lap. Is he ever? Here he comes, Gunther. An opportunity up the inside here, perhaps. Has he done it? He has, but we see Elliot take it back again. What a great move by uh, Troy Gunther there. He gave it everything he had to, up the inside, uh, but it wasn't to be on that corner. He's keeping the pressure on, though. Yep. Oh, big movement there for the Kawasaki man. The teeth gritted in pursuit of the leader. No, he's lost too much ground now with just a couple of corners to go. I think uh, that was the wake-up call Elliot needed on the last lap when he saw the green Kawasaki nip up and take the lead. When you've been leading every lap uh, for the whole day, the last thing you want to do is see Kawasaki on the last lap of the last race of the day. So here he goes. It's been a great weekend. Braden Elliott wins the second Super Sport race, and he gets the job done. Two starts, two wins for the day. Gunther, well done in second. Then Quinn and Burns, Hyde Limington, Lambert and Coot in advance of Phyllis, who dropped back to finish ninth. And the other Quinn rounding out the top ten in race two. Super Sport, brought to you by Yamaha on Fox Sports. Hold your head high, Braden Elliott. Yeah, that was a great result uh, from Braden. Uh, really fantastic weekend. All right, so we'll take this opportunity to hear from our race winner. Well, from pole position to two starts, two wins, and you've got the first place trophy. What a weekend. Yeah, I couldn't have asked for a better weekend. Um, from start to finish, it was just unbelievable. We really got the bike handling great, which was um, probably one of the key moments to the whole weekend. And then to get my first pole position was pretty unreal. And then, as you said, come away with two race wins was, was a perfect weekend. Troy, congratulations. Second in that race, second for the round. Great weekend. Yeah, it really was. Um, we made good progress throughout the weekend. And I really enjoyed that race. I'm glad it went full race distance. And, um, very happy with the way the Pirelli tyres are working. They went really good and have helped us throughout the weekend to develop the bike. Came third overall for this weekend. Importantly though, you come out of it with the championship lead. Yeah, I've never really been in this position before. So after a not so good race, one at Phillip Island, we turned it round down there and now for two podiums in the championship and a fourth place in the last race just then. It's an absolutely awesome feeling to go to a track I've never been to with a championship lead and a small buffer, but we'll try and capitalise on that over in Western Australia and guide the championship home but it's long from over now like we've got some really fast guys in this championship and we'll have to race it right to the end well done let's check the championship points at the completion of the morgan park round elliot leading by two points in advance of uh, kane burns aiden coot and mitchell blair chris quinn rounding out the top five earlier Bryony caught up with matt maladden well, the people you run into at the Australian Superbike Championship, I found this guy, Matt Maladdon, the winningest rider in American road race history. That is a tongue twister, but it's also a pretty big deal. Welcome. Oh, yeah, thanks for having me. Now, how long has it been since you've been to an Australian Superbike round or event? Uh, um, Australian, actual Australian event, 20 years. So when I raced here last, so wow. yeah, which shows my age a bit, I suppose. <laughs> well, talking of age, you were the youngest w uh, winner of an Australian Superbike Championship. Yep long time ago. What did yeah. that mean to you back then though? Well, you know, I mean, I was uh, 20 years old when I won the championship and, uh, you know, back then it sort of meant you got a bit of a, maybe a bit of a leg up in the Grand Prix and stuff like that, which these days things have changed a little bit, you know, it's, there seems to be, you know, it's a lot more corporate these days, big sponsors and, and people paying for rides and things like that. So it makes it tougher for the local kids to sort of get over there than what it, than what it was for me. So um, 
and, and some, of the, some of the guys that back in my day that also went on to do pretty well internationally. But, you know, it's, um, it's good to be... I, I, I've got an interest in racing again and I retired nearly six years ago and I didn't really want to look at a motorbike when I retired. I was just over it. Um, but I sort of got a bit of an interest in it again and, and wanted, wanted to get out and have a look what's around and see who's around and how things are going. And I know that uh, Motorcycling Australia have picked up the series again this year and starting to build it back up again, which is good to see. And, you know, up here at Warwick, there's, there's a good crowd here and, you know, and the racing's been pretty good and we've got some good young riders there in the first race on the, on the top of the box. So, yeah, it's been quite interesting. You're watching the Australian Superbike Championship from Morgan Park Raceway in Queensland. Our coverage presented by Yamaha Motor Finance, Yamaha Motor Insurance, Motul and Pirelli. On Fox Sports, welcome back to Morgan Park Raceway at Warwick in Queensland. Almost time for the second Superbike race of the weekend, presented by Yamaha Motor Finance. Let's go down to Bryony on the grid. Mike, the final race for the weekend. Can you make it a clean sweep? Yeah, look, I'm really hoping to. Uh, like we've been strong all weekend, had a fantastic... Uh, so far, the weekend's been perfect. So, um, yeah, really hoping that in this uh, this last race we can get a, get a race win and that'll give us the overall round win. That's the plan. Conditions have cooled down a bit somewhat from the first race, which is unexpected. How do you adjust to that anyway? Yeah, look, the, the conditions are a bit cooler and we've got a bit more uh, uh, breeze. So um, that'll affect the bike a little bit. It'll just be a matter of getting out there and, and seeing what it's like in the first couple of laps and uh, seeing how we go. All right, I'll get out of your way. Good luck. Cheers, thank you. OK, so... Start imminent here in this event, presented by Yamaha Motorcycle Insurance. It'll be Jones, Falzon, Hearn Henry, Martin Lovett, Hampton, Salter, Senior. Starting up towards the front of this pack. If you didn't catch our earlier race coverage today of the Superbikes, well, frankly, Mike Jones dominated proceedings, defeating Daniel Falzon. Will it be more of the same here? Waiting for the green. At Morgan Park, conditions perfect in Queensland for this event. Jones on the Kawasaki, right hand side of screen, good start, fouls on. Got an absolute flyer when the green lights were switched on. Let's see how it pans out down the main straight the first time. And Daniel fouls on it is, on 25 that leads the event early from Mike Jones. Yeah, once again, that's a great start from the uh, young lad on the number 25 R1. He certainly gets off the line well, but uh, look at uh, Jones up the inside already. Amazing uh, comeback by Jones, just uh, out broke uh, fouls on into turn four, uh, the tight right-hander. So uh, now we can see from the back of Jones's bike what uh, he can do. Fouls on nice and tight. Fouls on. Would be desperate to try and stay with him. Easier said than done, of course. Jones so good around here. The Kawasaki, a great package. Fouls on aboard the Yamaha YZFR1. Yeah, it's a bit of an unfair uh, showing at the moment, as we said in race one. I mean, uh, Jones's bike is uh, fully prepared. Fouls on's machine, on the other hand, still a completely new package. I bet Yamaha are buoyed by what they're seeing here with this new R1. Uh, when they've done a little bit of work to it and a few more parts become available for it, it's certainly going to help uh, Daniel Fowles on, uh, on the Caterpillar Yamaha get up uh, with the guys like Mike Jones. Interesting perspective there of the main straight here at Morgan Park. See a bit of cloud rolling in. And out the back of Mike Jones's bike, that was Chas Hearn runs third, rider of machine number 24, the EBR. Yeah, good to see Chaz once again backing up the strong result that he had in race one, putting that EBR on the box. The first time that an American uh, bike has been on the box here in Australia, so uh, in the Australian Superbike Championship. So, what, do you, what are your thoughts on the EBR? I like it. I think it's a, it's a great bike. It's a, it's a unique uh, package. There's nothing standard about it. If you ever get a chance to have a close look at one, it's... Um, you know, there's a lot of things that are different. It doesn't have a linkage in the rear end. The uh, shock just bolts straight onto the swing arm and then onto the frame, but they've made it work. The front brakes, once again, if you look at a standard bike like this uh, R1, it's got twin discs. 
The EBR has one single disc mounted to the outside of the rim. It's a V twin engine. Uh, it's only been around for a couple of years. Uh, made by Eric Buell, of course, um, in uh, in America, and uh, you know he's a, he's a unique character. Suzuki race replay at the start, relatively uneventful again, but we did see an absolute fly from Daniel Falzon from position two on the Yamaha. And you'll recall that he led during the very early stages of the race, but of course uh, Jones was able to get him under brakes as they went through Motel Corner the first time. And now Jones is careering away with this one. Yeah, well, Mike Jones is the lap record holder around here from the last time he was here, and he's just smashed that lap record now. He's into the 15s, 15.5, uh, which is a pretty impressive lap time for Mike Jones. And as you can see, he's cleared off. But you know what? He's the sort of rider that now he has to beat himself. He's really pushing himself to the limit. And if anything, you know, he's not going to back off. No, and that's the sign of a rider that is the business. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I mean, what he wants to do now is uh, not only does he want to win, I mean, to feel that he's not cheating himself. He doesn't want to ride easily. He wants to ride on the limit until the end of the race. He's not going to take it easily. Um, and, you know, that's good for a guy like this guy, uh, Young Falzon. Remember, it's his first year in this class as well. So not only is it a new machine, but it's also him getting used to the Superbike as well. So uh, Daniel Falzon and the R1, a completely new package versus uh, the Kawasaki ZX-10R of Mike Jones. There's a great perspective. Different look at the Morgan Park Raceway. I certainly want to, wouldn't want to be sitting backwards on that bike, that's for sure. Uh, mate, you're a little on the dizzy side, you'd suspect, as fouls on down the main straight in second position, but here's our race leader. Of course, Jones is 19 years of age, and he makes no secret of the fact that he wants to ride at the Moto2 World Championship. That's his short-term goal. Started racing as a three-year-old, and has had some experience overseas racing in the European Superstock 600 class. A little bit of sideways movement there for Falzon. There's Chaz Hearn as well on that EBR that we were talking about just before. Looks over his shoulder. You no need to look, Chaz. You've got a little bit of company. Yeah, there's more than a bit of company. A bit of congestion oh, Chaz. out there. Can well, you believe that? Hampton it was that went past him. We're talking about Chaz and the job he's doing on the EBR and he throws it down the road and well, he's back on it, he's back on it, and uh, let's hope that he hasn't broken any controls off that machine he can get going, but it's certainly handed uh, a podium position to uh, Hampton from New Zealand now, and uh, I'm sure that his confidence has been growing throughout this weekend. Here's another look, Chaz is already worried, he looked over his shoulder just before, tipped it in, bang, loses the front. How does that happen? How does it happen? Well, you saw a couple of corners before that, Chaz was worried about what was going on behind him rather than what he was doing there and then. A little bit wide, tried to close the line, put too much pressure on the bars, and bang, down you go. You lose that little bit of edge grip, and uh, you can't afford to do that. Because remember that these guys are already just riding on a piece of rubber the size of half a credit card. All right. So the moral of the story for young riders listening to you is to look straight ahead and focus on what's in front of you. Yes, because you can't change what's behind you. Ryan Hampton on 89. He is third. Behind him is Ben Henry, the Queenslander, on bike number 18. There's Ben now, the Cube Racing Kawasaki. Yeah, this, and he's doing a good job. Yeah, this is an important meeting for uh, Ben because not only is, is he living in Queensland now, but uh, he's a Western Australian... Uh, Western Australian uh, by by heart. You know, he was he grew up there and he started his racing career there. We're heading into Barbagallo next. This could be his last year of racing as well. So, so I'm really looking forward to uh, what he's going to do here. And I'm sure that when he gets to that uh, racetrack in uh, Western Australia, one that he knows well, he's uh, you know everybody wants to get on that podium at least once in their uh, in, you know, in their in their last year of, uh, of racing. So let's hope that uh, Ben Henry, if he does decide. Uh, to lay down the boots and become a full-time team manager for guys like Mike Jones, because let's remember, he is uh, the teammate of Mike Jones, um, you know, that uh, he can uh, do himself proud. You mentioned Barbagello Raceway in Western Australia, the next round of the championship of the Yamaha Motor Finance-sponsored National Series. It's May 22 to 24. 
Of course, Barbagello, uh, formerly known as Wanneroo Raceway, 50 kilometres north of Perth. And it opened back in 1969. It's a full championship round with all the major classes. And adult prices for Sunday start from $25. A two-day adult pass just 30 bucks. That's great value. Well, I'm going to get myself one of those because I'll tell you what, having raced there and uh, watched there, it's a, it's a great place to spectate from. Kids under 15 free. And entry on Friday, the first day of hostilities, is totally free. So if you're watching our coverage today from Morgan Park and you live close to the Barbagallo Raceway, pop out on the Friday, absolutely no charge. A great opportunity to watch the bikes in full flight during practice and qualifying and get up close to the riders. Talking about Morgan Park um, up here in Warwick, I just could not believe the amount of spectators uh, coming into the circuit this morning. It was uh, unbelievable. And what a show that has been put on for them over the weekend with this Australian Championship round up here in Warwick. Congrats to Motorcycling Australia and also to Morgan Park Raceway, the club at the helm of this fabulous little circuit at Warwick. They do a great job. Very hospitable, very well organised and most importantly, very presentable venue. Yeah, it certainly is. Mike Jones once again doing what he does best, which is leading the pack today. There's fouls on. Just once again, a little bit out of shape, a little bit of uh, movement in the front there. But uh, I'm sure now with just a handful of laps left that uh, what he wants to do is just get the, the valuable uh, 20 points that he's going to take home for second place. That's uh, a great uh, first outing for him on this R1 because this is the first time that he has ridden the R1 on the track here this weekend. Yeah, the uh, defending, in fact, two times back-to-back -back winner of the Australian Super Sport Championship. He's a busy young man. His racing ambitions are plentiful. He's also studying at uni. So he wouldn't have a lot of spare time, this yeah, young man. Yeah, you know what? He's studying. He can actually treat himself. He's studying to be a paramedic. So uh, basically, it's the only rider out there that can fall off and then assess themselves and treat themselves. So <laughs> pretty handy. <laughs> that, is, that is more than handy. Nice uh, onboard shot there from the back of uh, Daniel Fauzon on the Caterpillar R1. Good to see Caterpillar involved in the sport too. Big company, um, helping uh, the South Australian team out uh, with uh, lots of uh, sponsorship and help. So good to see them involved uh, in our championship. Yeah, the corporates um, obviously play a major role in the success of any motorsport. Of course, uh, we'd like to thank Yamaha Motor Finance for its principal naming rights right sponsorship of the national championship. Also Yamaha Motor Insurance, Motul and Pirelli, Honda, Suzuki. We also pay tribute to them. Great companies for their support of this series. And of course, Fox Sports for screening the pictures. Fouls on. Safely in second. Accruing a good points haul, as you have just alluded to, Steve. It's been a very successful weekend for this team and this rider. Yeah, it certainly has. I think he's only going to go to strength to strength with uh, the time between now and Barbagallo Raceway. I'm sure that uh, Yamaha will work on pegging this man back Michael Jones. Jones on his final lap. It's been some weekend. The Queenslander in his home state resides in Brisbane, about a two hour drive from here. And he will be grinning like a carpet snake in a foul house underneath that Darth Vader looking helmet. <laughs> yeah, they call him Mad Mike, and uh, that is for good reason because even on this last lap, he is not slowing down. We're looking at the back of his bike now. Rear suspension working hard. Well, you said it earlier, he wasn't going to slow down and become complacent. That's not what it's about when you are an emerging rider with genuine career objectives. It's about pushing yourself and your machine to the limit throughout, and he's done that. Yeah, he's riding like a man on a mission, a mission that's not going to end here this weekend. So not far to go for Mike Jones on the Australian Outdoor Living Cube Racing Team A1 Race Paint Entry. The Kawasaki ZX-10R and the all-conquering Kawasaki this weekend celebrates with a mono across the line and just too good for his rivals here at Morgan Park in Queensland. Fouls on second, then Hampton, well done to him. Likewise, Henry, Phil Lovett, top five, great effort by the veteran who just loves his racing. 
I'm pleased for Phil and the other place getters you could see on screen. So a highly entertaining weekend of racing at Morgan Park. First time I've visited this circuit, I've thoroughly enjoyed the experience. It's a really picturesque venue. We'll take this opportunity to go downstairs now and hear from Bryony Ingerson. Mike, what more can we say? It's dominant performance this weekend. Congratulations, an awesome effort from yourself and the team. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, you know, the Australian Outdoor Living Q Racing team have uh, got the bike working really well for me this weekend and um, it's just been perfect from the start to the finish and I couldn't be happier. We head to WA next. Do you think it'll be another case of Catch Me If You Can? Um, probably not. I've never been to that circuit before, so um, I'll just probably do, be doing a fair bit of learning uh, around there. But I think that, um, you know, being my second year in the, on the Superbike and, and with such a great team, I think that it'd be possible to get uh, race wins again. Well, Daniel, another second place, second for the weekend. As we've already spoken about, the development on the R1, you're just beginning it. So you